Congressmember Polis, we wanted to switch gears while we still have you with us uh, to address the issue of the USA Freedom Act. Earlier this week, President Obama signed into law the measure ending the mass phone surveillance program exposed by Edward Snowden two years ago. The Senate passed the USA Freedom Act Tuesday with a vote of 67 to 32. The law stops the bulk collection of telephone records, instead requiring the NSA to ask phone companies for a specific user's data rather than vacuuming up all the records at once. Congressman Polis, you initially co-sponsored the legislation, but ended up voting against the measure in the House. Can you talk about the USA Freedom Act and your efforts to rein in spying by the Drug Enforcement Administration as well? Yeah, so uh, certainly it's a strong step forward for privacy advocates. I would argue it doesn't go far enough. It leaves much of the Patriot Act intact. But certainly some of the most uh, extreme violations and the uh, mass uh, collection of personal data uh, will no longer be authorized uh, under the Patriot Act. So it's a strong step forward. Uh, I would like to see additional reforms within the Patriot Act so that we can best reach uh, the balance between privacy and national security. We also passed an amendment uh, just uh, yesterday, which ended uh, the DEA's uh, authorization, which uh, it was never an explicit authorization, but it was an authority they took upon themselves, drug enforcement agency, that is, to engage in mass surveillance of personal information as well. So Congress attached to an appropriations bill a specific removal of any authority from the uh, drug enforcement agency to engage in mass surveillance. But this USA Freedom Act that you co-sponsored and then ended up voting against, what was the original bill and what did you feel um, was taken out that was too important to be taken out, which is why you ultimately voted against it? Sure. So the USA Freedom Act is essentially a reform of the Patriot Act, uh, which is the post 9-11 authorization uh, that allowed, uh, gave, gave the, the government more tools to look into the terrorist threat against our country. It's a broad scope to that legislation. There's parts of it that are uh, unobjectionable and there's others that raise uh, very important privacy concerns. One of the set of privacy concerns raised were around what are the processes around mass surveillance or mass gathering of data. There was a blanket authorization or at least the executive branch interpreted the authorization of the Patriot Act to provide them with the authority for a blanket authorization for metadata, uh, et cetera, uh, from people. That uh, specific authority has been ended. What, where the bill still goes too far, in my opinion, is it allows for uh, key words to be used uh, for uh, mass surveillance uh, of, of information that's retained at the phone companies. For instance, uh, a, a city or geographical term, however specific, it might be the entire state of New York or California or Los Angeles, there's really not any specific legal parameters around this, could still be used in a government request uh, of information that continues to be stockpiled at a uh, at a private company. We would also want to make sure that security concerns are addressed with regards to how companies maintain uh, their databases of our personal information. And do you believe, Congressman Polis, that Edward Snowden should be allowed to come back to the United States without facing charges? Well, he violated our law, so clearly he uh, would face charges. Uh, I would certainly, I'm, I'm not the attorney general, but if I were, I think some sort of plea bargain where he would serve some time in prison would be appropriate uh, in, in punishment for his wrongdoings. But I don't see any particular reason why he uh, uh, should have to spend uh, the rest of his life in, in Russia. I think if there's an accommodation that can be reached where uh, he agrees to serve a term in prison in recognition of his violation of the law, uh, that might be the most appropriate outcome. Uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, in an interview with The Guardian, uh, said that um, uh, that Edward Snowden should come back to this country, the sort of, uh, I think the words being used by the administration, man up, and he could launch a vigorous public and legal defense. But we see what happened with Chelsea Manning at the time, Bradley Manning. We did not hear his voice in all the years that he was held, that he was tried, now imprisoned for 35 years. Um, when someone is charged with this level of charge, um, it is rare that you can actually hear them. Why I, would I Edward Snowden I don't, I don't believe he could I, I, be heard? 
Yeah, I don't blame him for not coming back. I think if I were in that situation, I wouldn't come back either, absent some sort of plea bargain or assurance, uh, whether it's five years in prison, three years in prison, whatever it is. Uh, I, I think he's worried about coming back and facing the rest of his life in uh, prison and perhaps even at times uh, solitary confinement. We certainly heard about some of the issues with regard to Chelsea Manning. Uh, so uh, I, I certainly um, uh, understand why he's not coming back and uh, facing an uncertain fate. And last question, as you, I know you have to leave, about fracking, Colorado's big fracking state. Um, Oklahoma just passed a ban on fracking bans. Maryland just passed a ban on fracking. Um, can you tell us your position in Colorado, what you think should happen around this controversial uh, means of extracting fuel from the earth? Well, I'd love to see a middle ground between those two extremes, and I personally would like to think that's the Colorado way, where we empower communities to make decisions around zoning and appropriate use of, of lands that are within their jurisdiction. So I would continue to oppose a statewide ban in Colorado, like New York and Maryland have done. Uh, I would also strongly oppose any legislation that tries to preempt local authority. In fact, in our state, I've long advocated legislation uh, that gives explicit local authority for the types of zoning decisions that our cities and counties have with regard to every other type of industrial activity, uh, and I think that they should appropriately have that with regard to fracking activity as well uh, to help protect their communities. Congressman Jared Polis, thanks so much for being with us. Democratic Congressman from Colorado, the first openly gay parent member of Congress. That does it for our show. If you'd like to get a copy, you can go to democracynow.org. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Burke, Renee Feltz, Aaron Mate, Steve Martin. Martinez, Sam Alcoff, Hani Massoud, Robbie Karen, Dina Guzder, Amy Littlefield, Anna Osbeck, Mike DeFilippo, and Miguel Nagara are our engineers. Special thanks to Julie Crosby, Hugh Grand, David Prude, and Vesta Godars, and to our camera crew, John Randolph, Karen Krug Meadows, and Jose Miranda. To watch any broadcast of Democracy Now!, as well as the speech of Evan Young, the valedictory address you weren't supposed to hear, go to democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh.